Welcome back. Hope you're having a good morning. Well, we've listed all the top stocks that we're tracking. And now we have Prakash Thiwan who joins us to help us out with some fundamental stock talk. Uh, hi, Prakash. Good morning and good to see you in. Well, Prakash, the result over the weekend that the bulls will be clinging on to is ICICI Bank. Large weight on the Nifty, on the Nifty Bank as well. And those numbers look quite good. I think one of the brokerage notes that I was reading said it's in a league of its own and a world of its own as well. What's your view uh, on, on this name and the numbers that you saw? No, absolutely, Nigel. I think the numbers uh, come as a big relief, uh, especially when you have the likes of Indescent and IDFC just gone by. So for every I say, say you also have some of these other names uh, that <clears throat> make you worry. But you know what? What it tells you is that it's only few of the large private sector banks that will be able to manage to scrape through this uh, season where credit costs have gone up. There's, there's absolutely no doubt uh, lending is becoming difficult. If you look at the pressure on NIMS, uh, it, it's it's so distinct. Even some of the NBFCs have reported that, uh, but the bigger ones have probably managed, like Sriram Finance, for instance. So I think what it tells you is that uh, money will flow into the more resilient, larger uh, balance sheets, which which will be able to get through uh, through this difficult phase. Uh, Q2 is usually not the best of seasons for banking, any which ways. But uh, I think if they if they get up for Q3 and Q4, given these numbers. Probably you'll see a lot of capital allocation come their way. So I'm, I'm quite, of course, everybody is very happy with the numbers, but uh, uh, it offers probably now uh, a very good risk reward uh, at these levels, uh, given these uh, stellar numbers. Uh, there, there have been improvements all across, whether it's credit quality, whether it's the uh, ability to garner deposits, which HDFC Bank also reflected. So I think the larger private sector banks, the top three, if not the top four, <clears throat> barring Kotak, I think that that's where the money should kind of start coming in. Uh, these numbers definitely corroborate that. Okay, that's uh, ICICI Bank. Uh, Prakash, good morning and happy Monday to you. You have such a huge barrage of numbers to go over, right? Uh, what about some of the weaker ones? Uh, tell me what you think, if any of them, I mean, whether you'll be sort of optimistic and buy the dip. There is IDFC first. Now, the asset quality issues are real. But uh, I was going yeah. through some of the notes because if you if you go through the other parameters, for instance, their margin is actually pretty okay. On the retail side of the book, they've done fairly okay. The problem is all MFI. So there's IDFC first. There is a Bandhan Bank, which is also weak. Credit access, of course, very, very weak in terms of asset quality. So what thoughts on uh, any of these names? No, I, good morning, Sophie. So I do agree, you know, MFI as a pocket uh, is something which... Uh, which is kind of adding up to a lot of stress. In fact, Q2 is probably just the beginning. Q3 will probably see all of these stresses peaking out. And, and you've got Digan coming. I'm sure he'll be able to throw light on the worrying part of uh, this entire space. Uh, he tracks it so well. Uh, I, I personally feel if you if you look at these numbers, it's it's definitely another uh, you know reminder that you need to stay away from this space which has been struggling. And remember, Bandhan Bank, the likes of Bandhan Bank have had some very positive news flow as well. But these numbers tell you that uh, end of the day, markets track uh, as, as slaves to earnings. And, and if earnings are going to be disappointing, all the good news that you have, whether it's change in management, whether it's, you know, the RBI uh, uh, forbearance, all of that is not going to kind of matter so much. So I think people will stay away uh, en masse from, from uh, this space. Uh, there's nothing really much from, you know, from if you take, some step away from the NBFC side or the banking side. Uh, some of the disappointment that you saw uh, the numbers uh, post market on Friday. One of them was Indigo, and and I I don't know if you've spoken yeah. about this already, but uh, but but I think you know that's where you would kind of look at a bad quarter for reasons not related to performance, but you know more operational issues uh, related to aircraft grounding and unavailability of engines and all of that. I mean, and you, you you know you keep getting surprised when Indigo was charging so much. What is it that's making it lose money? Uh, and, and that's exactly what will probably correct itself at some point in time, provided, of course, crude uh, remains uh, under a lid, because that's that's the other worry part that's coming. The market will probably react negatively. But I would believe for long-term investors, uh, Indigo becomes a worthy uh, uh, stock to look at for the simple reason that these things could correct. Uh, they will have to correct. And when Vistara and Air India start uh, having their operational merger, uh, effectively next month onwards, I think it's going to be an opportunity. The, the opposition, the competition will blink and Indigo could probably make some ground, uh, uh, some more ground in, in terms of market share and all. So I am quite positive on the future. 
uh, this opportunity probably is worth it uh, right. in terms of taking that risk. And I think uh, oil being down 5% this morning uh, also perhaps uh, helps, right? So Indigo maybe reacts uh, early on as it always has so many quarters we've seen. Uh, big sharp cut and then, uh, you know, it kind of uh, recovers. We'll see. OMCs perhaps are the other pack you should keep an eye out on because they've fallen quite uh, quite a bit uh, over the last, from the recent highs actually. Names like IOC, HP, etc. Prakash, uh, you know, have you? I don't know if you've looked at the overall damage the broader markets have seen, and why don't you identify one or two ideas? You know, from what has suffered damage, what looks good? Not day-to-day -day kind of earnings reaction, but from highs we've had stocks falling 30, 40 percent. Anything looking interesting to you? So, Prashant, you know, it's it's quite interesting uh, the way the market's kind of giving you this. Suddenly, we uh, we're all waiting for this opportunity. It's come uh, with with such a massive. Uh, bang and and you know the worry is people start looking at uh, a further cut you know wherever things have fallen and they want to buy into it there's always this human tendency to wait for a, you know a deeper cut uh, and get a bargain but i think from uh, the setup that we see you know if you look at gmdc or you, even a small chemical company like privy uh, speciality uh, you know i think if you look at the earnings growth uh, two quarters have already clocked, uh, you know, most of 80% of what last year they did in terms of profitability and uh, EBITDA. So, you know, there are these uh, green shoots in some other spaces where things are looking up and they've also got this greenfield project which is underway. So, I, you know, if you look deeper, there will be opportunities uh, and the price cut just makes it much more interesting. So, uh, yeah, 20, 30%, 40% uh, cuts from values, you know, and that's all PE contraction in some of the names. So, look at, I'm, I'm, I'm very clear. Wherever the P is contracting, the EPS is growing. It's a great combination to look at. Uh, so these so couple of names. GMDC, which up. is the which is the second one? Sorry, I missed it. A GMDC and Privy, Privy, Privy Specialty Chemicals, Privy. Privy Specialty. It's, uh... it's a small okay. company, but uh, you know, in in the fragrances and flavors segment, and I mean, hmm. uh, you know, it hasn't been talked much about because there are lots of things which are going in terms of capex, which was done and stuff like that, which has started to. Uh, start uh, reflecting into the numbers. So you, you probably have a couple of good quarters going forward. Ambik, let's get back to our chat with Prakash Sivan. Prakash, I wanted to ask you about metals as a pack. Now, NMDC, even in my Friday's trading session, if I'm not mistaken, the stock was more or less flattish. It didn't correct. And Nalco actually has seen some selling. Though I'm telling you what, the second half of this year or maybe the next three, four quarters are going to look absolutely splendid. Alumina short supply is going to help them deliver a very, very strong set of numbers. The stock around this 210, 220 rupee mark, what's your view on either of these names? And also if you want to chip in on Godavari Par, came with their numbers over the weekend. It was a disappointing set, but to no one's surprise, though they've skimmed down on their guidance. So Nigel, uh, I don't know if you recall Nalco the other day, uh, I briefly mentioned, uh, you know, from the metals back, this probably stands out as the, one of the most promising. Uh, Various reasons, of course, the alumina shortage, the huge demand in China, which can't just be met, uh, and all the issues that you're having from Guinea. You know, it's it's a, a Cinderella kind of a you know setup for these guys. They they have also got their capacities, augmented capacities, operational. Uh, all of that is going to start reflecting in H2 uh, FI25 onwards. And at this level, at this level, look at the resilience. Uh, Nalco used to be at about 220 seven or something when you know the market lost so much ground and it just lost about three four percent this tells you uh, that nobody is willing to give uh, give up on the holding that they have the the constitution of the business uh, and the shareholding pattern both as a combination tell you that this is a great place to hide uh, you know jsw steel numbers from the metals pack is something which you if you dissect you'll probably find that there's some uh, you know what what optically seemed disappointing is actually not uh, there are uh, quite a few decent uh, <clears throat> metrics that have improved out there. We'll, of course, have to uh, listen to the management to understand the way forward. But I think metals as a as a pack is something which you have to see allocation come to, uh, given the fact that they've, they've corrected from peaks uh, and the setup is improving. It's just that I think most people would be waiting for the November US election outcome to figure out how China behaves. Uh, that's the big elephant in the room right now. But otherwise, I think from a, a non ferrous space, uh, Nalco stands out as probably one of the best picks. We'll have a new listing today, uh, Prakash. Vare as well. Uh, much touted 
uh, the guys who got allocated well, they're going to be very, very happy today going by the premiums that we are, uh, you know, we, that we've been hearing about. Uh, but this sector itself, you know, it seems it's got a lot of tailwinds. I'm looking at some of these companies, the way the profitability increases once scale uh, goes up, it's tremendous, you know, doubling a profitability on a year-to-year -year basis. Uh, your view first on Vare post its listing and anything else you like from the broader markets in this space? So, you know, Nigel, what's going to, you know, every day you see these targets are power generation uh, keep getting up uh, and, and ferociously, you know, by the government estimates and by all other means. Uh, now, that tells you that it's actually going to be contributed by renewables. There's no doubt that this is going to happen. And there's a huge value chain uh, out there. I would believe Wari uh, is, is definitely going to be a key player, but uh, it's something where, you know, people have probably priced it to perfection at this point in time. So, uh, from from the listing level, I don't know how, where it gets listed. We'll, of course, there's a few more minutes and we'll get to see that. But after that, uh, you'll probably have to take a call. How does it stack up with some of the other players? And remember, this space is getting to be extremely competitive. Uh, you know, end of this year, we'll have Reliance announcing a lot of developments around that. So things will probably be very different in terms of supply. But my sense is the transmission side on renewables is something which uh, is, is still underinvested, and that's that's where growth is going to be huge, uh, whether it's transformer, whether it's BSS. You know, th th there's so much that you can talk about there. But uh, we'll, we'll, of course, have to kind of start looking at bottom-up uh, basis also while the sector has huge tailwinds, as you rightly said. The headwinds are most uh, stock specific, while the tailwinds have been sector specific. So that's that's where you'll have to make a little bit of a judgment call. But it's it's quite promising in that side. And there are lots of players that have come into. A lot of them, if you take the marginal smaller players out, even the larger players, you know, even if you invest in an REC, for instance, there's nothing wrong. I mean, it sounds boring, but uh, you know, that's that's a space that's going to continue to grow at a scorching pace. So I, I'm quite positive on uh, picking those kind of names, but. We'll, we'll have to wait to see the earnings season go through for uh, identifying some real uh, winners out there. Okay, all right, got it. Uh, Prakash, indeed, I mean, Wari, I think uh, it's been lapped up big time, but the issue is pricing, like you're saying. It's a profitable company, profits are rising, it's hitting the sweet spot in terms of renewables. But yeah, at what price is it good? And I think the market will answer that question today. Thank you for joining in. We look forward to connecting again soon.